EPA Apostolic Church, praise the Lord. It's such a blessing to be able to come into your homes this Sunday to magnify the name of the Lord together. Praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. Gather your family, your children, your friends. Tell your neighbors that it's time to praise the name of the Lord. Praise God. Let everybody, the Bible says, let everything that have breath Praise ye the Lord. I'm going to challenge you today, praise God, to gather everyone in your household around the television or your telephone or your tablet, your computer. Amen. And we're going to exalt the name of the Lord together. We're going to fill every house today with the aroma of praise. Amen. We want the power of God, the Spirit of God to enter into every home. Praise God. Amen. If there has ever been a time that our community needs to see a house that is filled with the glory of God, it is today. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to lift up your hands right now and let's just magnify the name of the Lord together. Father, we come before your presence, God. Lord, and, and we just declare your glory today, God. We want to declare, God, your greatness, your faithfulness, God. We want to magnify the powerful, mighty name of Jesus. Uh, we're going to lift up your name today, Lord, in every home today, God. Uh, in Jesus' name. Praise God. Amen. Listen, let's sing unto the Lord. Let's, let's just praise the name of the Lord together. Praise God. Amen. Welcome to our service today. Why don't we just lift up God today? Let's sing it out with all of our heart. Here we go. Go away. 
Thank you so much, EPA Apostolic Church, for coming and showing your love and your appreciation. We're just so grateful for what you did today, and we're, we're committed to continue to preach the gospel, to pray for you, and just together to expand God's kingdom in our community. Praise the Lord, church. We appreciate you. We love you. This was a beautiful surprise. Uh, we just want you to know that you're in our prayers every day, and we can hardly wait till we get together and we get to worship the Lord together. And God bless you. We love you.
God, with all of our heart, with all of our heart. You are my champion. Giants fall when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won. I am. I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence. God, would you magnify the name of the Lord? Shataya Maka. Jesus, we love you. Lord, we praise you. God, we give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your presence in our homes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shataya Maka. Rishati Mako. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Praise the name of the Lord. Just before we move on any further, I'll make him some. Uh, short announcements. Praise God. We're going to be continuing our fasting uh, until the end of the year. Praise God. Every week, every week we are fasting. So you make sure that you uh, uh, connect, uh, get yourself uh, with your spouse, your, your, your family. One day out of the week, if the Lord leads you to fast two days or three days, you do it and you're going to see God do some great things in your family, in your life. Amen. Sister Patty and I, we're experiencing a great move of God in our family, in our lives, in our marriage. And we're just so excited. Remember that every Friday we have a 24-hour fast. It starts Thursday night at midnight. So whatever hour that you have uh, been assigned, I'm asking you to be faithful to that hour of prayer. Praise God. Amen. Make sure that you connect to your connect group every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, our English connect groups are uh, in session. So you make sure that you get connected to your connect group. And listen, today, every Sunday, every Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m., our juniors, our juniors have a Bible study through Zoom. So you want to make sure that you get connected to your uh, or, or get your children, get your, your juniors connected to their Bible study at 6 o'clock tonight, this evening, amen, through Zoom. Praise God. We're going to prepare right now to give our tithes unto the Lord, our offering. If you're a member, a member of EPA Apostolic Church and you're faithful to God, amen, we return unto God uh, our tithe, 10% of his blessings over our life, we return unto him. Praise God. Amen. And uh, also our offerings, we're sowing seeds into the kingdom of God. And remember, listen, listen, if you're tired of what you are reaping, you better change what you're sowing. Amen. If, if what you're reaping is not what you want to reap, you need to change what you're sowing. So this is a moment to sow into the kingdom of God. Amen. Would you lift up your hands right now, Father? We come before your presence, Lord. And, and God, we just want to bring our offering unto you, Lord. And uh, we just pray, God, that it would be acceptable in your presence, God. Lord, thank you for opening the windows of heaven and pouring out blessings, God. Thank you for what you are working in our midst, all the miracles, the testimonies, God. And I pray right now for every household, every family of this congregation, Lord, that you would bless, God, that you would suffice every need according to your riches in glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Praise God. If this ministry has blessed you in any way, we invite you to give with us right there where you are. There are many ways to give on your phone and online. Download the EPA Apostolic Church app on your mobile device. It can be downloaded for free on iOS and Android devices. On the app, select the Give tab and your amount that you desire to give. You can also text the word EPA Church to the number 77977. You will be sent a unique link where you can securely give online. To send your offering by mail, you can send it to P.O. Box 639 Palo Alto, California. 
California 94302. Please make your checks payable to Apostolic Assembly. Praise the Lord. Let's get right into the word of the Lord. Uh, God gave me a very powerful message to preach on Thursday uh, regarding uh, three giants in our life that we need to confront. And it was a very powerful word. And the Lord has just impressed in my heart to continue with this subject. So today I am going to be uh, speaking on the subject, confronting your giants, confronting your Goliath, praise God. First Samuel chapter 17, uh, verse 45 to verse number 50. This is the word of the Lord. Get your Bible, get your, uh, your telephone, your tablet. And, and I just want you to follow with me the reading of the word of God. Then said David to the Philistine, amen, talking about Goliath. Thou comes to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Verse 46, this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smit thee and take thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with a sword and a spear, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted, and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and slang it and smote the Philistine in his head that the stone sunk into his forehead and fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone and smote the Philistine and slew him but there was no sword in the hand of David. Father, this is your word, God, and we just come before your presence, Lord, and I'm asking that you would speak to us, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we examine the victory that God gave David when he confronted Goliath, something that jumps from the story, uh, it's how David was so... Uh, courageous to confront Goliath, praise God. David never ran from this giant. David confronted Goliath. We will never be able to overcome the giants in our life, the giants that the enemy has sent to destroy us, if we do not have the courage to confront them. By nature, we always try to avoid having confrontations, hear me, with giants that are threatening us. The reason, it's because we lack courage to confront them and to declare God's promises over our life. If we don't have the courage to confront the lions in our life, Praise the Lord. Amen. We will never experience the victories that God wants to give us. We're going to examine uh, the different types of uh, enemies that come against us, the different types of uh, giants that the enemy uh, rises against us. We have the giant of depression. This is a very powerful giant that the enemy uh, uh, brings against the people of God. Amen. And this giant wants to steal your joy. He wants to steal your peace. He wants to destroy the love that God has bestowed in your heart. Praise God. He wants to rob you of your tranquility. 
praise God, so that at night you're not able to sleep. And, and, and that's the work of the enemy. But today we're going to de defeat the giant of depression. The second giant that I want to present to you, it is the giant that the enemy uses to come against your marriage. It is the giant that the enemy uses to bring division within the marriage. And the ultimate purpose of this giant is to destroy your marriage because he knows that if he can destroy your marriage, he's going to destroy your children. Amen. When children are affected because of a marriage, listen, it has a domino effect. Amen. It stays with them for the rest of their life and, and it creates so many dysfunctions within them that they bring that dysfunction into their marriage and they pass that dysfunction over into their children. The third giant that I want to present to you today is the giant that the enemy uses to attack your finances, to attack our finances, praise God. I want you to know something. This giant, he is uh, 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 very cunning. One of the, 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 the works that he uses or one of the, tact, the tactics that, that he uses, I want you to hear me. Amen. It's, it's debt. Amen. Praise God. Uh, credit card debt and, and putting you uh, uh, in debt way above your reach. To the point where you cannot pay your tithes unto God. You cannot sow into the kingdom of God. So what the enemy has done. He has cornered you. He has placed you in a position. Where all the doors of heaven are now closed unto you. Praise God. We need to be careful with that giant. The fourth giant that I want to present to you. It's the giant that comes against your health. He comes with infirmity. He comes with sickness. He comes with pain. He comes with d disease to try to attack your body because Satan knows that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. The fifth giant that I want to present to you, the giant of addictions. The work of this giant is to bind us with different vices and destructive addictions such as alcohol, drugs, pornography, and all kinds of other wicked things that the enemy plants or wants to plant in our hearts and our mind that will lead us to sin uh, and would put a barrier between us and Almighty God. The sixth giant that I want to present to you, the giant of immorality. The work of this giant is to entrap us uh, uh, in illicit relationships such as adultery, fornication, and all kinds of illicit uh, immoral relationships, homosexuality, lesbianism, and all kinds of uh, immoral perversions. Because see, Satan knows that if he can entrap a child of God with immorality, praise God, his body is the temple of the living God. Praise God. God is going to give us victory today over every giant that the enemy has brought against our life. Would somebody magnify the name of the Lord? Praise God. The question, Pastor Prado, how do we confront these giants? How can I confront these giants? I'm going to present to you two very important principles that we need to understand. The very first principle, listen, we need to know who our God is. You need to know, my brother and my sister, the God that you are serving. Hear me. I'm not talking about knowing about God, having a historical knowledge of God. I'm talking about having a relationship with God, walking with God, having the presence of God in your life, praise God, having a, a communion with God daily, praise God. I'm talking about a relationship where you know God and God knows you, praise God. Amen. The Bible says that Adam, before the fall, uh, the Spirit of God would come Amen. Every morning, the, every evening, the Spirit of God would come, hear me, to have communion with Adam. When was the last time that you had communion with the Holy Ghost? 
When was the last time that you felt the presence of God in your life and, and you, Shatayamaka, you just lifted up your hands and you just began to magnify God speaking in other tongues? Why is it so important to speak in other tongues? Hear me, because see, that is the language of God. Praise God. The Bible says that he that speaks in an unknown tongue, he's not talking to men. Praise God. He is talking with God. Praise God. Amen. The lack of communion with God produces in us ignorance of God's promises in our lives. One of the most powerful weapons that the enemy uses, hear me, it's fear. It's fear. We fear when we do not know the promises of God. Whenever we are, whenever we're informed of the promises of God, amen. Listen, now we have faith. So fear, it's a lack of faith. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Praise God. How is it that we're, we're, we're going to overcome the enemy? Listen, we need to be anchored on the word of God. The word of God needs to be in our heart. Because when the word of God is in our heart, listen, now we have knowledge. Now we have faith. Now we know the plan of God for our life. Now we know the promises of God for our life. Now we have a solid foundation where we can stand, praise God, to confront our adversary, praise God. Amen. Look at some of the promises of God's word. Let's go to, uh, to Isaiah chapter 49, the book of Isaiah chapter 49. And I just want you to notice these powerful promises. Verse 24 to verse number 26, shall the pre- be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered. Amen. This is, the, this is God speaking. Amen. Can the innocent person, can the weak person be taken away from the mighty man? Look at verse number 25. But thus saith the Lord, even the captives of the mighty shall be taken away and the pre of the terrible shall be delivered for I will con. I will contend with him that contendeth with thee. What is God saying? I'm going to fight your battles. He that fights with you, God is saying, listen, I'm going to fight with him, praise God. And I will save thy children, verse 26, and I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. What is God saying? I am going to destroy your enemies, and they shall be drunken with their own blood as the sweet as as with sweet wine and all flesh shall know that I the Lord am thy savior and thy redeemer the mighty one of Jacob praise the name of the Lord what is God saying praise God he that comes against you praise God listen he's going to confront me that's the promise of God I want you to notice Isaiah chapter 54 and verse number 17. This is the word of the Lord. No weapon, say it with me. No weapon, no weapon, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. What a powerful promise. Whatever weapon, whatever the enemy has conspired against you, Praise God, whatever conspiracy that the enemy wants to use against you, listen, God is saying, it's not going to happen. It's not going to prosper. It's going to fail. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Go ahead and magnify the name of the Lord there in your house. Shatayamaka. Go ahead and shout. Go ahead and do a little dance. Praise God in the presence of Almighty God. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, listen, listen. We need to know the promises of God. Amen. Why is it that we fear? We fear because we're ignorant of the promises of God. Amen. You know, it's just like a citizen in this country. You've got rights in your country. You've got, uh, uh, if, if, if you're living in a country that, that, that has a law, there are laws that protect the citizens. We're citizens of the kingdom of God. Praise God. We've got, my God, so many promises. But listen, if, we, if, 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 if we're not anchored in the word, if the word of God is not in our heart, we're ignorant 
of the promises of God. And because we're ignorant, now we're walking in fear. We're living in fear. That is why EPA Apostolic Church, it is so important for us to get the word of God in our hearts. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to ask every mother, every father, get the word of God in the heart of your children, praise God, so that they can live in peace, so that they can know their rights as children of God. So the question, how do we confront our enemy? The very first thing that we need to know, we need to know not about the God that we serve. We need to know the God that we serve, have an intimate relationship with him. And when you're walking with God, listen, everybody that rises a war against you, amen. What is God saying? I'm going to take care of them. They're going to fight me. They're going to fight me. No weapon formed against you, my brother, shall be able to prosper. That is your inheritance as a child of God. Amen. The second principle that I want to present to you, just like David did, just like David did, amen, you must confront your giant, amen, you, you must see him hear me face to face, eye to eye. What am I saying? Don't run from your giant, confront him. Your giant may be, it may be depression, it may be anxiety, you might be fighting the giant of anxiety today, praise God. You might be uh, fighting today uh, 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 a financial giant, praise God. Don't run away from it. You need to confront it, praise God. Maybe you're, you're, you're confronting a giant that, that, that has come against your marriage and there's issues in your marriage. Don't run away from the issues. You need to sit down and confront the issues. Maybe you're, uh, you're fighting a giant that has come against your, your household, your children, the unity of your home. Praise God. Understand something. Listen, it's not your child that's the problem. No, no, no. Your child needs love. Amen. Your child needs love. Don't, you know, so many times we, we blame the person. It's not the person. Listen, it's the giant. It's the enemy. There are spirits behind who are working, in, hear me, in the background that are influencing us. Amen. And we need to stand before them eye to eye, face to face. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17. 1 Samuel chapter 17. And let's read verse 45 and verse number 46. I, want, I, I just want you to notice I want you to notice, amen, uh, the position of David, praise God. Then, say, then said David to the Philistine. Now remember, he's, he's a young man. Uh, many scholars think that he was about third, uh, 12 to 14 years of age. Think about it. A 12-year-old, a 13-year-old, a 14-year-old standing before a warrior, a champion, a champion, Amen. And, and it, it wasn't only Goliath, but it was also his armor bearer. Amen. Not, many, not, not, not very many people talk about that, but it, it, it's, it's Goliath and his armor bearer. What was his armor bearer doing? He was there to guard him, to protect him, to help him. Then saith David to the Philistine, thou comes to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts. You're talking about having faith in the God that you serve. Praise God. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. See, before, before David confronted Goliath out in the wilderness, David had already confronted a bear. David had already confronted a lion. Praise God. What is the, the battle with the bear? Hear me. It's the battle with the flesh. The battle with the bear, it's the battle with the flesh. It's, see, the Bible says that the flesh wars against the spirit, and the spirit wars against the flesh. Listen, the battle of the, of, of, of the bear is the battle of the flesh. The battle of the lion, it's the battle of the world. The battle of the world. What does the Bible say? Love not the world, neither, neither the things that are in the world. For if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Watch this. 
the battle of the giant, it's the battle against principalities and powers. Amen. We need to understand the different levels of, of warfare, spiritual warfare. Listen, listen, you'll never be able to confront the giant. You'll never be able to defeat the giant. Giants that, 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 that their powers and principalities, their governments, praise God, in, 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 in heavenly places, and, and, and they have dominion against, against territories. You see, Goliath had dominion over a whole army. Amen. Listen, we're never going to be able to fight in that realm of spiritual warfare if you're still battling with issues of the flesh. If you still, listen, if you still have character issues, if you're given to anger, if, 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 I mean, if you haven't defeated lying, a lying tongue, praise God. Amen. So, so that is the battle of the bear. The battle of the, of, 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 the, of the lion, it's the battle of the world. If you're still doing things that, 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 that identify you with the world, praise God, you can't confront your, your giant. You need to overcome the world. And we're gonna, we can only overcome the world, praise God, by the power of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. That is so important for us to understand. Amen. So, so, so David, he had defeated the bear, which means the flesh. He had de David had de defeated all the vices of the flesh. Praise God. He had defeated the world. Love not the world, neither the things of the world. Now David, hear me. Now he is confronting this giant, this principality, this power who is over a whole region. In fact, over a whole nation. Praise God. Let's, let's read the word of the Lord. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied, verse 46, this day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thy head from thee. What's he saying? Listen, what does the head mean? Power, authority. What was he saying? I'm going to strip you of all your power. I am going to strip you of all of your authority. That's exactly what Jesus has done. When Jesus died, and, and the Bible says that when he died, the Bible says that he went into the, in, into the, into the innermost parts of the earth. And, he, and, and the Bible says that Jesus, when he died, amen, he, he descended down, down into hell and he took captivity captive. Who was captivity? Death. The Bible says that Jesus took the keys away from death, from Satan, praise God. What does that mean? Satan does not have the keys to his own house, praise God. What was David saying? Listen, I'm going to strip you of all your power. I am going to strip you of all of your authority, praise God. That's the power that God has given his church. Jesus said, behold, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing in no wise shall hurt you, praise God. My brother and my sister, listen, you need to know who your God is and you need to know who you are as a child of Almighty God. Praise God. I will give thy carcasses, I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Wow. <laughs> Talking about having knowledge of who God is. Amen. Praise God. Listen, when you have knowledge, now you have courage. And when you have courage, you have faith. And when you have faith, listen, you're going to take action. Today is the day to take action. Come out of that corner, my brother and my sister. Praise God. Come out of that hiding place. Praise God. Come out of that closet. Come out of that bedroom. Come out, come out, come out and be free in the name of of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Listen, our attitude, it's so important. <clears throat> because see, our attitude is going to, it's, it's going to determine our outcome. Whatever attitude, if you have an attitude of fear, amen, listen, you're not ready for the battle. But if you have an attitude of faith, you will be victorious. Go ahead and magnify the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's look at 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse number 47. 
and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's. I want you to see the attitude of David. He was so confident. David knew that the battle was not his. David knew that he was simply just the agent that God was going to use to defeat Goliath. And he will give you into our hands. God will deliver you into our hands. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Listen, my brother and my sister, you're ready to take action. This is the day to, ta to take action. Not tomorrow. Don't leave it off. Don't leave it off for another week, another day. No, no, no. This is the day for you to be delivered of whatever your situation is, whatever you're fighting, whatever you're confronting, whatever hang up you have, praise God, whatever uncertainty, whatever battle you're, you're confronting, depression, praise God. This is the day to take action. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 17 and verse number 48. And it came to pass, watch this, when the Philistine arose, talking about Goliath, when he arose and came and drew nigh to meet David. He's coming to meet with David. That David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Praise God. I just want you to see the, the courage of David. What would you do? Praise God. What would you do, my brother and my sister, amen, if a giant came running to you, uh, uh, you know, with rage? He wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. Would you run from the, from, from the giant or would you be like David? Would you run to the giant to confront him? And that's exactly what David did. Amen. David took action. And I'm here to tell somebody, I am here to tell somebody, you need to take action today. You need to rise up today. You need to know that the battle is not yours. You need to know that the battle is the Lord. Whatever situation you've been confronting, my brother and my sister, the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. Amen. Don't, don't, don't put it off for another day. This is your day of deliverance. God wants to set you free today. Praise God. But you need to confront the giant in Jesus' name. Amen. Five very important uh, uh, things that we need to know about spiritual warfare. The very first thing, amen, listen, we need to put on the whole armor of God every day. Put on the whole armor of God. Not just a part of the armor. Put on the whole armor of God. Listen, your armor and my armor, they're different sizes. You put on your armor, and I'll put on my armor. We put on the whole armor of God. The second thing that we need to understand, praise God, amen, we need to know how to work the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Amen. Praise God. When was the last time you picked up your Bible? That's the sword of the Spirit. When was the last time you opened up the Word of God to... to, to, to Inform yourself of the promises of God. Amen. Listen, you can't go to battle without, without the sword of the Spirit. Praise God. The, the third thing that we need to understand, praise God, you need to be a person of faith. Amen. You need to stand firm upon the promises of the Word of God. Amen. A person of faith. The fourth thing that you need to understand, praise God, you need to be a person of action. The Bible says that faith without action, it's dead. The Bible says that when, 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 when Goliath came and he, and, 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 and he moved towards David, David hastened. And in fact, the Bible says that David ran to him because David was a man of action. Number five, understand this, number five. Listen, before David ever confronted Goliath, Something had happened in the life of David. The Bible says that the prophet Samuel had come into the house of Jesse, who was the father of David. And the Bible says that he came with the horn, with the anointing oil, and he anointed David, the anointing, the oil that was shed over David. He was anointed, listen, king over Israel. 
He had a kingdom anointing upon him, but he was still a shepherd. He was still a shepherd. The anointing will always proceed. The anointing will always come before the position. Praise God. I can preach on that. Praise God. But listen, listen, listen. Listen. If, if we cannot, we cannot confront, we cannot confront Goliath without the anointing of the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? We need to walk under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says it's the anointing that's going to break the yoke. Praise God. I believe that God wants to give you deliverance here today. Praise God. Listen, this is your day of victory. This is your day to be delivered from that depression. This is the day for you to be delivered from that anxiety. This is the day for you to break that habit of smoking, my brother. This is the day for you to be delivered from that, from that uh, uh, vice of alcoholism. This is the day for you to be delivered from, 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 from pornography. This is the day for your body to be healed in the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask you right now to raise your hands wherever you are. Praise God. I'm going to give up. I'm going to, I'm going to release the word of faith right now. Listen, and every shackle, every shackle, every vice in your life is going to be broken right now. You're going to be set free. And that giant, hear me, it's going to come down in the name of of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, God, I thank you, God, for today because this is the day, Lord, that you have that you have uh, uh, prepared, God, for victory and deliverance, God, for every person that will step out in faith, Lord, and confront whatever giant that is confronting their lives, God. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I take authority right now, God, and I release right now deliverance. Shatayamaka. I release healing right now. I release healing upon everyone who is listening, God, that will believe God for a miracle of healing over their lives be healed in the name of Jesus uh, I declare a miracle over your life I declare healing over your life I declare a financial miracle over your finances right now in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus be free in the name of Jesus praise the name of the Lord listen to me on behalf of my wife sister Patty and I we love you we embrace you praise God we will see you again on, on Thursday, Wednesday. You make sure that you connect to your connect group. Make sure that your juniors tonight at 6 o'clock connect to their Bible study. We love you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.